What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. And I'd like to give a quick, a quick shout out. See, I was in my uh, my local coffee shop today. I'm wearing this Cafe Y t-shirt. It's a cafe in the area by me. Very popular in New York, downtown New York. I had the t-shirt and the, the guy at the coffee shop who I met before is the owner. And he was like, oh, do you work there? And I was like, Psh! So I work at a coffee shop. No, I was like, no, I don't, uh, I don't work at the coffee shop. I just, uh, I just like the t-shirt and I like the spot, whatever, whatever, whatever. And he sort of asked me, he's like, what do you, you know, what do you do for work? So I explained to him, I was like, I talked to a bunch of fucking assholes about fantasy football on YouTube. He was like, oh, we used to have a girl that we worked with that did like a podcast and YouTube and stuff. And we used to give her free coffee for shouting us out. And I was like, ooh, ooh, let's, uh, let's get, let's, let's make a deal. So basically... Shout out to my uh, my favorite morning coffee spot, Coco's Coffee House, if you happen to be in the area. Greenwich Village, down by Washington Square Park. 175 Bleecker. That is the address. Go check out Coco Coffee. Okay? Coco's Coffee. Tell them I sent you. I love their coffee. And now I get it for free. Uh, if you guys care about fantasy football, you could obviously skip ahead in another four minutes. But I wanted to take this, this chance to just talk about business for a second. You know, I kind of tweeted this out already. I put it into our email uh, letters as well. And, and Tony will put a timestamp in to skip ahead to the fantasy football shit. If you guys are impatient and, and fucking assholes and don't want to listen to my personal stories. Here, here's how YouTube videos work, okay? In terms of sponsorships, in terms of people advertising on my channel. Typically, they reach out and they say, hey, uh, we'll give you 10 bucks to throw our stuff on your channel. And I say, fuck you. And I say, we charge a $30 CPM. Now a CPM means cost per 1000 impressions or cost per 1000 views. Okay. So we put a mark telling them for every 1000 views we get on a video, I want this many dollar bills. And we work on a $30 CPM. So for every 1000 views on a video, 30 bucks. So a 10,000 view video will get $300. That is like the typical base rate. So we'll say, hey, 10,000 view video, $300. This guy just offered me a fucking free cup of coffee each day to be shouted out into his video. Now he's getting a fucking four minute plug here. So this is this is worth way more than that. And companies pay a lot of money to get shouted out into videos. This guy, being a good businessman that he is, realized what I value. It's all about understanding your target market, your target customer. I go into the coffee shop a lot. He says, ooh, he likes coffee. What do I do? I make coffee. I can give him a $4 coffee. Yes, these coffees in New York are like four fucking dollars. So he's getting a $300 plug for $4 a day. It's a pretty good fucking deal if you ask me. Here's the thing. Here's the thing when it comes to business. Like it's not always black and white. It's not always technical. It's not always about money or revenue. Most of the time it is, but more so it's about diversifying the revenue. When you diversify the revenue, it's not just about dollars. It's not just about the wallet or the bank account. It's about diversifying the investments that you put out there, right? I like to I like to invest into the coffee shop because I like their fucking coffee. I like giving bike to the community. I like a lot of the things that come along with it. It's just fun for me. It's fun to be like, yeah, the coffee shop sponsors me and I fucking love coffee. I drink a lot of caffeine, as you could tell. I'm very amped up right now thanks to coco's coffee house um so we're, we're making business fun again in 2021 okay and that's a life lesson one understand who you're talking to two value what that person's value what that person values okay so if you want to make a deal with somebody you want to reach out to somebody understand what they're about understand what they care about understand uh if they're all about money then boom you got to offer them money but if they're all about coffee you offer them free motherfucking coffee and it just might work out for you but don't take things too seriously if it feels right do it. Don't force things that don't feel right. Okay. And this shit feels right. It doesn't really feel right in my stomach right now or coming out the backside, but it felt right this morning. So that being said, we're about to get into the rest of my running back rankings, 2021 fantasy football running back rankings. We did the top 12 last week and we've been breaking them down into six a piece. So we did one through six. We did seven through 12. Both of those videos will be linked down in the description today. We are doing 13 through 18. So the high to mid end running back twos. Most of them have upside. Most of them have floor. There will be a couple of them that break or make your fantasy team in 2021. That's what we're here to talk about today. If you're new to the channel, I promise I don't fucking just go on spiels about business for five minutes at a time. Typically, we usually get right into the fucking big facts of fantasy football. So subscribe to the channel if you give a shit about either of those things. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoy the video. We're ready to roll. So everybody, tuck your shirt in. Stop yelling. And let's see. To continue down this flawless list, number 13 is Najee Harris. And we're going to be referencing Underdog ADP. It's the sharpest ADP in the industry. 
these are all paid leagues, so the ADP is about as close as you're going to find to real money league ADPs. Najee Harris, 13th ranked running back for us. Number 13 in underdog positional ADP as well, so the RB13 there, zero difference. His overall ADP is 17, so you're looking at you know, uh, a mid second round pick. If you want to invest in that, Najee Harris. Uh, and as I talked about in yesterday's video with Chase Claypool, it's really obvious to me that the Steelers just want to go very run heavy this year. When you draft a, a workhorse running back, a 225 pound running back in the first round, that pretty much screams the sentiment that, that I just said, right? The Steelers last year had the second highest pass rate in the entire NFL. 65.5%. That number is going to come down tremendously. We're going to see Najee Harris eat up 20 carries a game. He's going to be a huge, his volume, the volume that Najee Harris is going to see this year suggests that he should probably be closer to the RB1 spectrum than in the second round. Uh, the problem becomes, as you've probably already heard from 75 people, is what kind of efficiency are we going to get from Najee Harris, right? This is an offensive line that's not good. They ranked 31st in PFF's run blocking grade. So that's problem number one. And behind this offensive line, you look back to last year, James Conner, Benny Snell, if you look at player profiler, both of them ranked outside the top 45 in terms of run blocking efficiency on player profiler. That being said, that being said, uh, Najee is going to be a hell of a player in the NFL. And I think when you combine talent plus volume, you're looking at good shit for fantasy, right? You, you look back at last year, James Conner, Benny Snell, obviously like the least enticing duo I could I can name since fucking snacks and, and garlic. But the combination of those two, 280 carries, 1,090 rushing yards, 10 rushing touchdowns, 57 targets, 45 catches, 276 receiving yards. I don't think those numbers are unreachable for Najee Harris, okay? And all the numbers I really reference are going off a 16-game pace because that's how we're going to be able to register fantasy numbers in our head. I don't think those. I don't think that's out of the re uh, realm of possibilities for a guy like Najee Harris. For as much shit as we're giving this offense, right, and with a broken bend and a bad offensive line, they average nearly 27 points per game. Okay? They were top 12 in terms of scoring teams in the NFL. And everyone everyone proclaims Najee as his floor play, but we don't know what his ceiling is. What if he gets 30 carries? What if he sees 65 targets out of nowhere? What if he's in that Le'Veon Bell role immediately, right? Najee feels like one of the easiest players to project to be like a top five fantasy running back pick next year. Problem is, is that spot next year a projection or is it based off this year's numbers? I think, I don't know, man. I usually tell you not to shoot for floor when you're talking about second round running backs, right? The argument I made for Swift in last video, but that's only because I feel like we know that his ceiling is limited. Do we know that Najee Harris's ceiling is limited? Do we know that he can't score double digit touchdowns? He's going to be the goal line back. Do we know he's not going to catch a lot of passes? He's probably going to be the third down back. He's a great pass catcher coming out of Alabama. I don't know. I think, I think he's got an underrated ceiling. I think his floor is very high. So I think him at running back 13 might be a little bit too low. I wouldn't be mad at you for taking him earlier than what I have him here. Next up, number 14, we've got Clyde Edwards Lair of the Kansas City Chiefs, and I broke him down in very deep, in the deepest of depths last week in uh, last week's Safi Seconds video. So I will link that down below. Uh, there will be an explanation on why I have CEH down here at 14 and not as an RB1, even though I don't think a lot of people have him as an RB1. So CEH, number 14, number 15, we have J.K. Dobbins. And I have him I thought I was, I didn't think I was that high on him, but I have him three spots higher than underdog ADP. Underdog has him at RB17. I am at 14. Right now, the the big, the big like surprise here is that he is going off the board 30th overall. So like midway through the third round, around where like DeAndre Swift is going. He is the best running back in a very good run heavy offense. I think it's that simple when you, when, when you really, when you really get down to the nitty gritty. He's, he's down at like 14 overall in the running back position because his ceiling is going to be capped with Gus Edwards there, right? He's going to have a major role in this offense. Both of them are going to have a major role in this offense. I think both of them are going to get a ton of touches in 2021, but he could very well have a Mark Ingram type like 2019 year. Okay. And Mark Ingram was really, really efficient. Five, five yards per carry. Uh, average between like 12 and 15 carries a game, not seeing much in the passing game as expected, but scoring a ton of touchdowns, right? Dobbins was great on the goal line last year. And you might think of like Gus as the goal line back. You might look at the two and say like Gus is a lot bigger. They're going to give him the ball on the goal line, but the Ravens have a good coaching staff. They understand that that's not how the world actually works. Bad coaching staffs do that. They look at who's the fattest running back and they give him the ball on the goal line. Very rarely works out that way. You give the best running back, the most agile, the best vision running back, the ball on the goal line, and, and typically they score. You look at J.K. Dobbins, DeAndre Swift, Aaron Jones. The smaller running backs are fine on the goal line as long as they're actually good running backs. Over the second half of last year, Dobbins outcarried Gus on the goal line 7-4. to four. Gus scored just once on those four carries. Dobbins scored six times out of the seven goal line carries he got, which is insanity. Again, very much like Aaron Jones. So we look at Dobbins, I feel like he's a floor play that could be really good if he gets a touchdown look. And I don't think it's out of the range of outcomes to see him score 8, 10, 11, 
12 ish touchdowns this year because I think he's get, he's going to get a lot of the goal line work. And uh, the pass catching going to be a problem again. I don't think Lamar is just going to start dumping off the running backs. They had Rashad Bateman. They had Sammy Watkins. So they have other weapons to throw thy ball to. And that becomes an issue. I know they're, you know, the fucking Twitter is like, oh, my God, they said J.K. Dobbins is going to catch more passes. You're like, fucking, they probably said that last. I could probably go back right now, go to Twitter and uh, pull up 17 tweets about how J.K. Dobbins is going to catch 50 passes last year or some shit like that. So until we see it, I ain't believing that shit. I don't know what y'all believe about Green Bay. I don't know the Aaron Rodgers situation, which leads us to having Aaron Jones down here at 16. It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. He'll shoot all the way back up probably to around like right behind Zeke, maybe the RB six or seven in fantasy. If Aaron Jones is bike under center in Green Bay, he'll drop significantly or like stay around here, probably drop maybe to like the RB 18 to 20 range. If Jordan Love is their quarterback. Realistically, we have no idea what the tendency is for Jordan Love to throw to running backs. We have no idea if this team will be any good, if he's going to get goal line opportunities. Uh, does AJ Dillon factor more in on the goal line? You know, there's a lot of lot of question marks if Aaron Rodgers does not come back. They also lost their uh, their all pro center, Corey Lindsley, to the Chargers. So who knows? Maybe that has an impact on, on Aaron Jones running the ball and their efficient and his efficiency as a carrier. You know, I'm kind of doing these rankings as of where I draft them right now based on the risk tolerance that we have for Aaron Rodgers coming back or not coming back. So Aaron Jones, do whatever you want. Shit on me in the comments. But 16 is where I have him right now. Number 17, Mr. Christopher Carson of the Seattle Seahawks. I'll take Christopher Carson at RB17, the running back behind Russell Wilson, fucking in the third round, f 42 days out of the week. Okay. Stop me if you've heard this before. Rashad Penny is out with a knee injury. If I had to stop for that, I would have stopped making videos fucking five years ago. You wouldn't have heard from me. You wouldn't have seen this channel for the last, you know, 1,200 days if we had to stop every time Rashad Penny had a fucking knee injury. And there he goes again. He's got another knee injury, right? And I think people are, like, not drafting Chris Carson because, one, obviously he's had his injury history. But I think people feel like this is going to be a committee. Like, it's not going to be a committee. Penny, we've tried this Penny thing for the last four years. We've got four cents in the piggy bank right now, okay? It ain't happening. He's having a minor knee surgery, expected to be ready for training camp. Also, you know, I've never seen someone say this person's to be uh, expected to, to be ready for training camp more than Pete Carroll. Like, literally nobody says a phrase more often than he does, than that exact phrase. We've heard it. We hear it every single year with these guys. So just more missed time from Penny. Yeah, Carson was good last year. He missed some time, but on an efficiency basis, Carson was as good as he's ever been. Uh, setting a career high 4.8 yards per carry. He averaged just 0.2 fewer fantasy points per game than he did in 2019. His per game receiving numbers paced out 61 targets, 50 receptions, 383 yards. Those are big time receiving numbers. Okay. So Carson, I really like down here at 17. I think he, I think he provides you probably a riskier, riskier floor play. Cause we don't know if he can ever stay healthy for the full 16, 17 games, but I think his ceiling is really, really high behind Russell Wilson. Okay. So we move from Chris Carson, Chris Christopher Carson down to 18. And the final player on this list, make sure you are subscribed to the channel to get numbers 19 through 24 tomorrow morning straight to your face holes, okay? DeAndre Swift of the Lions. Again, yesterday I went in on DeAndre Swift, right? I've done this series for the, for those of y'all that are jumping onto my channel for the first time that are, that are new to the channel. Each Tuesday I do a Softy Seconds video uh, where I take two of the sophomore players, one at running back, one at wide receiver, and I break them down in depth going down the the ADP of those guys. So we've done Taylor, CEH, Akers, uh, Gibson, DeAndre Swift. Yesterday's video was DeAndre Swift. So go check that out if you want to. At the end of the day, um, the quick breakdown of it is that he's going to be great in the passing game, but Jamal Williams presents a problem for him in the rushing volume department, more particularly down by the goal line. Swift was great down by the goal line last year, but they have a new offensive coordinator in his name, his name sends chills down my spine. His name is Anthony Lynn. And we see we see what Anthony Lynn does with his A-back. He's labeling Jamal Williams his A-back. And you know what happens when he has an A-back? Well, he forces someone into the A-back role. And that forces whoever the B-back is out of the goal line situation. We saw it with Eckler over the last two years when it was Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon got all the touches. Last year, it was Kalen Balaj and Josh Kelly taking Eckler's goal line carries. Okay, So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Jamal Williams handle goal line carries in 2021, there's risk with Swift, okay? So running back 18, I think, is probably the right spot to be looking at DeAndre Swift, all right? Third round, fine with it. PPR leagues, much more valuable, but he could end up with like six touchdowns this year. Talented player, but there are some serious, serious red flags for Mr. DeAndre Swift. That's what I got for y'all today. Running backs 13 through 18 tomorrow. Running backs 19 to 24. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you go check out Coco's. Nothing but love for y'all. See you tomorrow.